Hello and welcome to the webinar of the month. Today we are talking about website edits for 2023 for interior design and home remodeling businesses. The topics of discussion today will be common problems in websites, advantages of competitive websites, website development standards, website fundamentals, and trends for web design in 2023. So there are a lot of trends that are heading around and you'll hear about Web3 and other new technologies that are happening. If you are familiar with the web space, there is a lot that is happening coming down the line, which we're going to talk about today. And you just want to make sure that your website is strategically made for what is to come. And it's optimized for the best use of user experience. And that's what we're going to really talk about today, because user experience is what can determine if you if you have a good website or a bad website. Some of the common mistakes. One of the things I see from a lot of design and remodeling businesses is that they do not have a website. And that's the first thing you must have, even if it's old, which is the next one, if it's outdated, you have to at least have a website to be relevant in today's market. Nine times out of 10, if you're in a design or remodeling business, your, your competition in your area has websites that homeowners or others in the area can look up. And so you have to be relevant and you have to have a site that actually showcases what you do. So having a website is number one. Next is making sure that website is up to date. Another thing we hear a lot about is that uh, designers and remodelers have websites, but they are one, two, three, four years old. And a lot of the time I've heard websites have been optimized or redone right around the coronavirus in 2020. So if that was the last time you updated your website, it was around 2020, I'm sure you've done a lot of jobs since then and none of your best work. Usually your newest work is your best work because you're learning as you go. So the more projects you have, the better you get and so you want to have your best work that showcases who you are, what you do on your site. So having your site up to date is imperative. User experience, like I said, making sure that the person that is visiting your website finds what they're looking for and also has a great user experience that then leads into them reaching out, contacting you, which can convert to sales. OK, website analytics is not on the site. Like you'll hear me say, Google Analytics, Google Search Console should be at a minimum on your website because that tells you a lot of information that can uh, help you optimize your site the right way. Social media is not maintained. If you have social media icons that are tagged to your website, a lot of times visitors will go to your website, then go to one of your social media platforms or vice versa. And so you want to make sure that your social media platform is maintained and up to date as well. The next thing is reviews. You want, you want to ensure that reviews are on your website. If you could get one to two, we have on here two to three, but if you get one review a month, that's really all you need. Just get one new review a month. So every time you do a project, be proactive in reaching out to, to the client and get a review for and is if you're getting one a month, at a minimum, get one a quarter. So at least if they look and it's April, you at least had one in January. Or if it's June or July, you at least had one in March or April. So at least one a quarter at minimum, but you want to try to get at least one to two a month if possible. Benefits of having a professional website, obviously, uh, is credibility because if you have a nice professional up-to-date website you'll be perceived as credible strong first impression like i said most of your homeowners are prospects that are looking for designers are going to look at your website and that first impression is important because it tells them who you are what you do the type of designs you work on correlate are symbiotic with what they are looking to do in their own home. Better Google rankings. If you have an up-to-date site, you'll be more favored in the search engines because the information is up to, up to date. That also ties into minimizing the bounce rate because the bounce rate happens when anybody 
goes to your website and does not find what they're looking for, and they immediately get off. That's a bounce rate. You do not want to have a high bounce rate. You want to have a low. Having all of this, the credibility, strong first impression, Google rankings or search rankings, and minimizing bounce rate, that actually leads to increased revenue. Because once you have all of these elements in place and your website is optimized and working for you the right way, you will convert and you will increase revenues. Website is an investment. I actually did a webinar on how to recession proof your marketing game plan. One of the main things I talk about, one of the things I talk about in there was websites. And having an up to date, optimized website will help you get past anything that's happening in the recession. So making sure that your site is up to date and optimized will help you in any type of economic downturn. Website development standards. There are a few popular trends from the past few years that will continue to be significant in the coming years. If you're undergoing a website redesign or you're hiring a web design agency, build a new website for your business. Make sure these elements are in the forefront of their mind. So these are elements on your site that you need to ensure that are being thought about when you're either doing a design from scratch, you're doing a redesign or just updating your site, okay? Making sure the site is mobile first. Over 80% of search starts on a mobile device. And that is also one of the search ranking elements that they look at is how does your site look on a mobile device? So Most of your end users or prospects are going to look at your website from your mobile device. And if it is not optimized correctly, they're going to leave. That's a high bounce rate. So ensuring that if you're doing updates on your own, if you're hiring an agency, however that's however that's happening, ensuring that the site is first mobile optimized is vital. Having SSL certificates, that is to ensure that all of the information on your site is safe. Nowadays, when you search for a site, if it's if it does not have an SSL certificate, the search engines will say this is not a safe website. And so that hurts you because most people, end users, homeowners will not go to your website if they see that the site is not safe. So ensuring that you have an SSL certificate is important. These are just some of the elements you need to have in your website in terms of Everything here you need to have above the fold. That is the area when anybody enters your website for the first time before they have to scroll. So ensuring that you have primary contact details, you have your company logo and name, a clear description. It does not have to be longer than a sentence. You have your main navigation. You have your call to action, social media links, and mobile optimized. If you have all of this in the site, whether it's new or newly optimized, you're ahead of the game because a lot of designers and models do not have a lot of basics. So making sure you have these fundamentals in place will help. And these questions here will help you lay out, okay, am I ensuring that I'm handling all of these elements in my website build out or optimization or redevelopment? Am I speaking to my target avatar? Who is your target avatar? What are their fears and frustrations? Does it explain why they should choose you over anybody else? Does your website have real authentic images? Does your website include video elements, welcome video, video of your services, video that differentiates you from the competition? And if you could get video reviews from video testimonials from your clients, that's great because a written testimonial is good and you should have those on your site. But if you could get video, even better. Does your website showcase live client reviews? And that's just what I was talking about. Does your website make it easy for prospects and potential clients to take action? So we want to have your website convert. We'll often talk and I'll often talk to our clients about CRO, conversion rate optimization. It's not so much that you drive traffic to your site, but how do you convert that traffic into buyers? And that's what these are the elements you need to have to make sure that your website is converted. Okay. Do you have a call to action on every page? Something that allows your end users to input their information, whether it's to get their information for a free consultation, get their information for your newsletter, somehow 
having a call to action telling people what you want them to do when they're on that page. You need that. Another website fundamental is a blog. Now, you don't have to create blogs two, three times a month like it used to be in, in the old days of SEO. And next month, we're going to talk about SEO techniques for 2023 because they have changed. And a lot content is still key, but how you create the content is vital. So I'm going to talk a little more next month about how you create content for SEO to drive more traffic to your site because it's changed a little bit. But at the basic level, you want to have a blog where you're showcasing and you're uh, putting out there information and content that shows you as relevant and an authority in the industry and in your area. That's what the blog does. It helps to uh, draw your end user to your site because you're you're you should be blogging about information that is interesting to your end user and knowing who your ideal client is helps you reverse engineer and figure out the type of content you should have on your site. But the blog is where you can have up to date information drawing them to your website. So having some type of blog or content piece that you're putting on your site is imperative. And remember, like I said, next month, I'm going to talk about SEO strategies. And this is for 2023 because a lot is changing over the summertime. If you haven't heard about GA4 is moving in and there are some changes in SEO and that's going to affect how you put content on your site as well, which I'm going to talk about next month. So these are the trends in web design. The first one is load speed and how fast or how slow does your website load? A lot of times designers have big images or video on their site and that slows down the website. There are a lot of elements that you can do to the images like tinyjpg, tinypng.com, where you can shrink the image, the size of it, but hold on to the quality. And you can host your videos on other platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, or any other platform where it's not actually hosting on your website and slowing down the speed. So there are elements that you can do to really enhance the speed of your website, which you do want to do, making sure that all the back end is right as well, because that'll also slow up the speed too. Page experience and Google announced a speed update a few years back, which means when all things were equal, content that loaded faster for mobile users would be would do better in Google's mobile search result. Google has officially incorporated this update into page experience system. And if you see here with the core web vital, you'll see loading time, interactivity, visual stability. And loading, load time is one of the elements that they look at. How fast is your website loading? That's where it talks about user experience and if they're going to bounce, because if you have a slow loading website, you're going to probably have a higher bounce rate because they're not going to wait for your site to load. Okay, so page experience and how you do that with the speed, the loading speed of your website is vital. And that's one of the core web vitals that they look at in search. Okay. Smart content loading. A lot of us are guilty of having a high resource heavy website with a lot of graphics. And that's a lot of designers or models they have a lot of graphics video, like I said there, but you want to also look at content loading. How does that load? So you have two different types. You have the lazy loading. Lazy loading ensures the web browser like Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, etc., will download only the content you see on the screen without wasting valuable server resources and time to load off screen content that might never be seen, as opposed to infinite scrolling, where website visitors never reach the bottom of a web page. So why load the content and increase site load time? So it's a better approach for loading content where there's a lot of scrolling, but they may not get there. So it just depends on what you're doing. And all of these are elements you need to take into account as you're either doing a new build or you're doing a redevelopment of your site, okay? Another trend, geolocation and browser-based content. So this is where you may have visited a website came back hours or days later to see that content has changed. When you pull it up on your phone for the first time or any other device, 
you may see original content for the first time you visited the website. So what they're saying is that you want to have your content or you want to have your website content around geolocation. So this could be for a designer. This could be if you're living in a certain metropolitan area, you can do all the surrounding cities, whether you do content, blogs, you could do pages about where else you do services at. That's a way to do geolocation based content. OK, and that is great for you and the search to understand who are you serving? What area are you serving? And who should I show the content to? OK, and that plays a lot into Google business profile and also into your website content and that you're creating content that's uh, relevant to the location where you are. OK, and Google released a new Google search ranking system last year, and it's expected people first content, which provides original helpful, informative, and relevant information to users will be prioritized at the top of search. So creating that content that is helpful and informative to your ideal client is, is important. And personalized content, and you can personalize it by understanding who your ideal client is. And then reverse engineer, knowing what type of information they're interested in and what they want to learn more about. Now you're creating content that's more personalized for them. And this happens a lot on e-commerce websites where they're uh, displaying recently viewed or saved products. But for a designer, that may be content around your area. Like I said, knowing your ideal client really helps you. here. Interactivity. Adding interactive sections in your website is a great way to provide value for your visitors and engage them on your website. Engaging your end users or your prospects is important. So there are ways that you can engage them, like having quizzes, polls, surveys. So for designers, a lot of designers may have a room where you can slide in different furniture pieces or, or you can have different elements on the site that, that can be showcased within the room. This happens a lot in showrooms. So if you have a showroom and you have an interactive display where they can start to create their own space around the FF&E furniture fixture and equipment that you have or you sell, that helps to get the end user or the prospects engaged. So you can take that same technology or that same element and put that on your website and have them engage there as well. Now, if you don't have a showroom, you can easily show different images to show, okay, are you looking for a room like ABC? And then have them do a poll and then have them submit that. And so that's letting you know, okay, this is the type of design they want, they are looking for. And so when you have that initial consultation, now you have some information on them that'll help you better answer their questions and better help you relate to what they're looking for. Accessibility and availability. This is one of the areas that's growing and, that's, and growing in search. And the search engines are looking for how well does your site engage users that have disabilities, either hearing disabilities, visual disabilities, and there's a lot that's happening in these realms. And so you want to ensure that your site is being seen and can be used for all users, not just able bodied And so the elements that you want to have in accessibility is creating strong color contrast between text and background, adding focus indicators such as a rectangular outline that shows up around links when using keyboard navigation, using labels, using functional alt tag. So these are just some of the elements that will allow your website to be engaging to all users. And some of this may not be readily available or may not be understandable to uh, the designer or the model, but that's why when you engage with your web developer or whoever is building your website or doing the redesign, you want to ensure that all of these elements are, are being taken care of or being thought about as you're doing the redesign or the build out. Chatbots are a great addition to the site because they can help add information to your site to the end user 24 hours a day. A lot of times you may have a user visit your site and want to ask a quick question. And if you have a chat bot, on there, you can already have pre 
program answers for typically asked or frequently asked questions and already have that information preloaded. If you don't have an FAQ section, or even if you have an FAQ section, there may be other elements that you want to add in that if they're on your site at two o'clock in the morning, wanting to see a, a designer in their area and ask certain questions, your chat box could probably help you. And that is an element that a lot of designers and remodelers do not really have on their site now. And so that's something that, that can help you stand out. And it helps you, it helps promote your site beyond just the normal nine to five, but any time of day. And it provides relevant information to your end user whenever they need it, when they're on your site. Voice activated interface. The way we access information is changing. Instead of typing into Google, we now ask a question or make a demand. This means web design is adjusting to keep up with the prevalence of voice chatbots and virtual assistants. While a voice activated interface isn't commonplace for most websites, especially in the design and remodeling space, this emerging trend isn't going anywhere in the foreseeable future. We can expect to see more and more websites integrating voice search as an option for traditional text search. This is something that is happening more and more on mobile devices. When people are out searching, they'll say, hey, Siri, or hey, Alexa, or hey, whatever it is, and they'll ask their question. And if your site is not configured for voice activated search, that is hurting you because you may not be one of the sites that are pulled up when that happens. Ensuring that your site is integrated and has the elements to uh, utilize voice activated interfaces is important. Micro interactions on a website are small animations that offer feedback to users. One of the most commonly used micro interactions is, is seeing a link change colors when a user places a mouse over. So when you hover over a link, it changes color. Or when you hover over a certain area, some type of animation or action happens. That is a micro interaction. And that also gets back to ETA call to action. So when you have certain areas of your site that you want them to engage with or interact with, you may have those micro interactions so they can actually click on it and have that CTA, whatever that call to action is, to make them do what you need them to do on your site, whether that's a consultation, newsletter, whatever that is for you. But those interactions help the end user engage with your site. Graphics and content. Innovative display and website graphics can make websites to serve useful, meaningful content to a visitor in ways that helps them in the buying decision-making process, okay? So the content and the graphics on your site can help or hurt you. There are some elements that are growing. Virtual reality, VR experiences on a website will continue to increase over the coming years. Think of sites like Airbnb that let you tour a rental before you book a reservation or a site like Ikea that, that gives you the ability to showcase what a sofa would look like in your home. So these VR elements may not be on your site now, and it may not be something that is feasible for you at this time, but that's something that you want to start to look at because that is growing. And that may be a requirement in the near future. Smart video is enough. Video has long been touted as a must-have for websites. People love video. It's engaging, and it's the most effective online marketing tool. While video is great, it needs to be thought out. That's what smart video is about. Video with a purpose and meaning. Gone are the days of embedding a YouTube video on your site just to have one well thought out high quality video is better than a dozen haphazardly assembled ones. When you're thinking about the layout, think about user experience and where you need to have the videos to get to have your CTAs, your call to actions memorable and have them relevant for your end user and what you what you want them to do on the site. Full page headers is another one dark mode and white space. These are all accessibility elements that helps improve the user experience on your site. And you just want to start to incorporate all of this information and all of these elements and features on your website. This was just an overview of websites and what to be looking for in 2023. Visit our resource library. Our resource library is massive. We have a lot of information there from training videos, NKBA, 
CEU sessions. We have interactive videos there. We have blogs. We have newsletter. We have a podcast there. We have training videos. A lot of information to help you in terms of growing your business, marketing, PR, and business development is in our resource library. You'll also have access to our book as well which uh, has a lot of this information, a lot of what I go over and explain is actually in the book. And what I like to say, whether you work with us or not, we have information in the book and on the resource library that'll help you grow that. Feel free to reach out to us because we're here to help. We help in all these areas from SEO to social media, to pay-per-click, to reputation management, video, email, website, PR, all of the above. Feel free to reach out contact us. We want to help you reach that next level. Next month, like I had mentioned earlier on in this webinar, we will be talking about search engine optimization techniques for 2023. There's a lot that is changing in the next few months. Over the summertime, GA4 will be in and a lot of the websites now that are using universal Google Analytics, it will not work anymore. And so they're transitioning to GA4. So, and there's a lot with that change that's happening with search. And so I'm going to talk about a lot of that next month. We hope to see you all here next month for our webinar of the month. Have a good day.